Peace, oh please, it's obvious. Today is the very second episode of The Obvious Truth. We have an absolutely incredible guest today. His name is Kyle Bent. He makes conscious and spiritual music. We have a song together. It's called Own Ambitions. Welcome, Kyle Bent. Hey, thank you for having me, bro. Absolutely, man. So, Kyle Bent, tell us a little about yourself. How long have you been making music for? I've been making music for about a decade. And, uh, yeah. Since you were, since you were seven, right? Um, yeah. That, that, dude, that's awesome. So you started writing rap when you were seven years old. Is that, is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Dude, that's, that's incredible. Like, that's first grade, right? That's first grade. Third. Oh. Third, yeah. Third grade? Yeah. Well, that, that's when I started, yeah, third, third grade. Okay. Was there, oh, yeah, I want to ask you this. Was there, like, a certain artist that really inspired you to make music at that young of an age? Nah, no. When I first started, it was, like, really just, it was, like, um, life. Like, my homie, like, introduced me. I was wow. actually just one. Yeah. So, it wasn't, that's crazy. Because usually I feel like people get into music because of a certain, like, you know, artist. They got a role model who's a musician or something like that. So that's that's really interesting to hear how you just you just got into like that like <laughs> I mean I was listening to artists at that point but um they weren't like the main reason why I got into right it. right gotcha that's that's awesome man so um, um so what was your like what were your lyrics like in the beginning were they like how you like how you're writing now kind of like you know kind of spiritual and like conscious were they like that. Nah, before they were just like really just life, you know, like a mm. like a little like a little kid going through school. <laughs> ate my lunch today, <laughs> ate a ate an apple, and then drank a snapple. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> close That's enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, but um, so um. When, when did your when did your spirituality begin? When, when what age were you at? Um, you make a lot of it. amazing spiritual conscious music, bro. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, big. I'm a huge fan, bro. Like I'm telling you, man. I love your music so much. I I, I resonate with your music almost more than like ninety percent of people. You know, just want to let you know. <laughs> I'm on it, bro. Yeah, it. yeah, for sure, bro. <laughs> but yeah what uh what what age were you getting into spirituality when did that music was, start to change yeah i was about um 16 i was about 16, 16 years old yeah and was it like something what like kick started what what started all of it um really researching stuff mm -hmm. um so like a lot of my research led me to like real life experiences um, mm. and the and the real life experiences kind of like leveled me up another level. Um, right. When it came to spirituality, yeah. Was there, was there like something certain, you know, something particular that you started to research that like you saw somewhere and then you just dove down the rabbit hole? Was there something like that, or just pretty broad? Um, it was like a lot of conspiracy stuff. You feel me, like government conspiracy. Um, mm -hmm. then, then I was researching, uh, uh, like extraterrestrials, aliens. Mm. Um, I was, and then, um, I was researching about like meditation and then, um, meditation was hard work. So I was researching about like quick fixes to like s spiritual state. So that's where drugs came in. So all that. Right. Uh, yeah. So one of, one of your, uh, really uh, potent experiences was was ayahuasca right you had that one yeah. video a long time ago yeah so what was that like um ayahuasca was a life-changing experience mm. yeah what were, what was it what was like some of the stuff like going through like you did you have visions like were you you know seeing anything particular or or mentally like what was that like? It was it was like being it was like being in a dream but awake. Mm hmm Were you were you moving around or were you just like sitting there, laying there, laying down? 
you do get to that point. I was definitely laying down. I was just chilling. Right. It was kind of lax. Couldn't really move. <laughs> were your eyes closed or open? You were seeing stuff. Open. And next, oh, okay. when you close it, when you close it, it's like, yeah, when you close it, it gets lit too. Like, <laughs> it got lit. Um, <laughs> you feel me? It was just being like in a spiritual realm of that wild. Explain lit. What is it? What, what was that like? <laughs> 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 well, I mean, like, like the whole experience itself was just like, it was, it, it just felt he heavenly, heavenly. You feel me? Like, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it was. Really, it was like being in like a chaotic, uh, life period, and then one day, just like being mm -hmm. able to feel the most angelic realms while still being in like <laughs> a not so good feeling environment. And so. Mm. Yeah. So you weren't in a good place mentally when you first did it, right? Is that what you're saying, kind of? I was in a good place mentally, but like mm -hmm. my actual living environment, like energetics, because like um, I'm an empath, so I feel a lot. Yeah. You feel me? I, feel, I, I feel I feel myself, and I feel like everything around me, like other people and whatnot. So, um, I totally feel you with that, man. You can just sense the you can just sense the vibe, how someone's feeling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All that. I know all about that, bro. It, it it's tough for empaths, you know. Like someone's not feeling good. It's like you gotta know how to like distance yourself, almost like be an observer and not get yourself sucked into their energy, kind of like that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah that that comes with a lot of practice. Like. <laughs> but that that's awesome. That's a cool experience. So like you weren't really like. So you weren't really seeing much then. You weren't meeting the elves, the the, the nah, factory elves. Nah, see like, <laughs> but see like, that's that's more like DMT. Like, oh, DMT, right. Yeah. You know, true. like I'm not gonna lie. Like I did DMT once, and I didn't have like I I never my DMT experience. I haven't had the blessing of like going to those those extremes. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But like I've like trotted on the border of like full-on breakthrough and like in those moments like yeah like i was you know i was engaging with entities you feel me that were like it was like it was i was like it was like um engaging with like the constellations but the constellations were like beings it was, it was wild it was tweets Whoa. Uh, yeah what, what, <laughs> what kind of like what kind of like messages were you like getting from them it wasn't a message like the whole thing they were doing they were like working on me and like it was almost like it was like the stars were working on me, working on my bar, working on my body, and then it was like remember like, you know, DMC um, trips are like real quick, so it was like right. thirty. It was probably you know, it was like five minutes max. Less. Once again, like wasn't a full breakthrough, so I didn't have that like twenty minute trip that felt like a day or some shit. Um, yeah, but but yeah, like and like five minutes or less um i was just i was just like they were just it was just like it was it was like my energies were just being you know the you know how i was telling you on like the last interview um the last segment of the interview mm -hmm. that like when i meditate it's like it's like my body's just tuning itself it was like that like, right like the just the energy the energies of the air like the mana or whatever like just the, just the atoms that move through the air was like just Wow. fixing my body you know just all that was just being fixed wow. but like it wasn't being fixed on its own it was like the constellation entities that was just they're they're just in the air bro it was just like <laughs> they, they were in space they were like you feel me they were right next to me but it's right. almost oh shit yeah yeah i think my like my zoom just crashed or something that was weird shit i, I don't mean to be spurs and I, I can keep explaining if you want but um, yeah, uh, that's awesome. So, um, did it feel like you're almost like home? Cause I know a lot of people experience that kind of sensation, like when they're out <laughs> in the DMT realms, like, did it feel like you were at home? Like, like, you know what I mean? No, no, that, no? that experience was actually like, like borderline traumatic, but like peaceful, oh. it was like traumatic and peaceful wow. at the same time. Yeah. It was traumatic, so like something like it was just too wild there for you for like. It wasn't too wild. It was like it was 
it was like what I was what I was smoking on at the like it wasn't extracted to the best purity that's one right mm. so it was almost like I was smoking on the residual residuals that weren't fully um distilled properly into like uh. you know the pure crystal form so like I knew that was what was giving me like the traumatic trembles you know how you was talking about like um the Kundalini. like feeling, yeah like feeling those trembles it was, that, it was similar to that but I don't feel like it was I don't know I don't, I don't feel like it was a a 100% one like mm. you feel like like right. it was like an error <laughs> an error kundalini oh wow yeah, it's all weird. Yeah. that that yeah. is pretty wild <laughs> yeah. wow um <laughs> You you also mentioned uh, when you're getting into your spiritual journey, you're really you were researching a lot about interdimensional beings, right? Aliens. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever like seen like a UFO or like had any alien encounters, or anything like that? Yo, to be told, I haven't, man. But I've like I see a lot of things in like the air and whatnot, and like I don't know, cause like it's hard to say when you're seeing like a government. Um, a government craft yeah, or like true. something yeah because like from what i would expect a ufo to move like a lot a lot of times like government crafts is moving like that too or like you know mm. they they're, they're copy enough where you can't really tell so i can't really say if i've ever right you know i yeah can't really like say you might have but you, you never you can never be sure. exactly like some, sometimes i'd be feeling like it that i'm like I'm also rational enough to be like nah you feel me like yeah like like not like not a not a doubter but also right just, I'm, I'm a realist you feel me yeah yeah dude i don't know man like i once had this wild experience like i was out on the beach with my girlfriend it was like it was nighttime and we were just laying down and we're looking into the sky and you know there's the satellites you know the satellites that go by it's like that little light and it goes but dude we literally saw one like it's going it's going and then literally changes direction shoots off we look at each other like what and then literally a wave just crashes all over us and then like we get out we look around there's no other waves like in the distance that have like gotten that far out so we were like dude th was that them like telling us that like yeah we that was us <laughs> that was us <laughs> you know um but yeah that that was wild so I mean, we always look at that as like a kind of like an alien encounter kind of thing as well. Sound like one to me, man. Yeah, cause I mean, they move through they move through space and time. They're not third dimensional exactly. beings, yeah. so they could have somehow made that wave. They could have been there and there at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. The kind of things. And I don't know. Have you ever seen um, Bob Lazar? Do you know about that guy? Um, Bashar? Uh, no, Bob Lazar. Oh, no, I don't. No? No. Well, there's this, there's this one guy. He, he was, he was hired to help, the, like, the government with working on, like, UFO crafts or something like that. Like, he, he's, a he's an engineer. He's an engineer. And he said it was pretty wild. Like, his, his, like, interview, they were literally showing him, like, this alien stuff and like literally an alien body and he was like what, what like why would they show me this like is this some kind of like prank or something like that like <laughs> but uh one of the one of the crazy things that one of the crazy things that he saw was they they were trying to hire him to figure out this this one uh device it was like anti-gravity something like that like they said it came from extraterrestrials like and he was saying like there's no way he was saying there's no way that this is like something that like the u.s invented or like humans invented because he was tasked to like figure out how this thing works so that like we can replicate this and um i'm not sure if they actually found out if he ever found that out but like he was saying it was out of this world like and uh yeah so it's like at this point they could have figured that out and we, the things we see in the air, that could be them. 
but um yeah yeah for sure um from what i understand that's why I like yeah from what i understand like a lot of the government technology is from higher dimensional um beings you feel mm-hmm. me and that's and that's whether and that's whether it's um physical or is it something simple as like your creative um ability like of a musician mm. or anybody you feel me like just getting mm. those channeled higher um messages and like tunes from you could call it god or the universe wh- however you rocking mm-hmm. um but yeah so like uh multi-dimensional beings or physical beings either or but that's 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 what i've heard right researched. yeah 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 i i didn't finish the documentary but i since you're into the aliens dude that's a i think that's worth checking out and he he literally so the reason why he was putting out this information against the government is because um so i I think what happened was he was like kind of talking about it and then like his life was at stake and then he's like all right i'm gonna come out to the whole world and explain everything so that way if i do pass away like you know you know that like he was killed because he was speaking out so he he did as an insurance policy basically so that's what that's like one of the most incredible things i think we have right now knowing about like area 51 because that's where it all like started basically like him exposing all this stuff so yeah man dude i i I definitely i definitely believe in this stuff and i mean and you you look at all like the ancient symbols like they got all these all this kind of like all these drawings and it's just like you know on ancient aliens you've probably seen it um have you have you watched ancient aliens are you like into that (laughs) Um, I'm pretty sure I watched it back in the day, but I don't, yeah. I don't watch it no more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's just so much, you know, there's just so much out there that it's just like, you know, how, how can you possibly think like there's no aliens? You know what I mean? It's just, it just doesn't make sense to not believe in that kind of stuff. I feel like, yeah. and, um, but yeah, you know what I also don't like, like, yo, so I was, I was going to ask you, what do you think of the possibility of an alien invasion? Because there's a lot of UFO sightings coming out like crazy now. And the government was coming out, the Pentagon, about the UFO sightings. Like, what do you think about that? I don't think we've ever not been living with them. So I don't, I don't, I don't see an invasion coming unless um, the world, the world fails completely. Unless the world what? fails completely oh, fails and, completely yeah so you think if there was to be an alien invasion it would it would it would happen if the world is really like falling apart is that is that what you're saying kind of yeah and in that case it wouldn't really be an invasion it would be like a takeover <laughs> well i guess that's an invasion right <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like i don't know like for me it feels like there could be the possibility of a fake yeah, an invasion. Oh yeah, they talked about that Project Blue Beam. Well, yep. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that popped off. Exactly, man. To, not like in Naruto where everyone unites in uh, in love, but for a, for a different like. I, I don't know if you ever seen Naruto. And, like, of course, how they all, bro. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> how they all unite to defeat the Madara Uchiha. <laughs> But um, yeah, I feel like it, yeah, they it could be something like that. Like the lasers, like dude, you see the holograms out there? They got Tupac, they got all these artists out there. Like, it looks so real, doesn't it? <laughs> like it can yeah, be possible. Totally where it's like in the sky, everyone's freaking out, and it's just it's just one of those. It's a fake alien invasion. Did you did you ever have like a really like profound experience? And like if you did, like what was it like? What, meditation? Yeah. Um, I mean, my favorite thing about my meditations is um, the more so tuning my body. Um, I don't really have like, like audio visual, like experiences. Like I, like the way meditation works for me, it's like, it's like um, I'm very in tune with my body. Like, it's almost like, um, it's almost like, like, you know when people say they can feel vibrations in their body? 
Yes. Or they can feel vibration. Like that's very real for me. Like that's Bro. by by not in the slightest means. Um, mm-hmm. Is it is is it like figurative or metaphorical? Like like right. I, yeah. So that's kind of what meditations are for me. Right. right. Now. But it's sober minded. So. Absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah. So like, it's like it's. A, do you feel it like in your ch- like in your chakras, or is it like in other parts of your body? Um. Yeah. It's, it's at that point where like yeah, I feel it. It's like it's. Feel, I feel it in my chakras. It's like um. It's like playing an instrument, kind of. It's like um, if you like play a flute and you mm-hmm. like touch, like um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I can feel the alignment of energies in my body, like you know. right. So like, if you go from like the root chakra and like work your way up, like do you you feel it like in individual like chakras basically, right? Kind of like that. Yeah. Um. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I. I this like yeah have, do you, did you ever have like kind of like a kundalini awakening because you're so in tune with your like energies i would feel like you would have had like something like that well if, if you explain it from your perspective i can let you know if i've experienced it in that way all right yeah so for me yeah i had i had the same thing i, I not like super often like where i can feel my energies like you but i mean i've had experiences where I'll be like sitting down and then all of a sudden it feels like there's almost like an earthquake going on. It's like, it almost feels like everything's like shaking, but then I look around and realize that's just in me. Like after <laughs> like some good meditations, like, <laughs> so like, I've had like that kind of thing. I mean, you, I've heard many people had like way like crazy experiences, but you know, that, that's what it was like for me. I don't know about you. What you're explaining reminds me of my trips. So like, I know like exactly what you're talking about, mm-hmm. but like, I'm you know I'm gonna assume, and I would I would doubt if I would doubt it be wrong. Like everybody has like their different experiences of how they experience their own energies and like chakras and all that. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm gonna say like, so like when you say like you're rub you're rumbling and whatnot, mm-hmm. um, it's almost like. You know how they say, um, I, if we're taking it like religious, they, um, like God says, like you're in Him, but um, He's also in you, right? So, like, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's Christianity. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like the idea that, like, when you feel that rumbling next to you, like, you know, like that's only me. It's almost like, um, it's. You know, like what's the best way? It's like it's like it's like the wind being your breath, right? When you're meditating, like when the wind hits you, like 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 Buddhists will monks will be like, that's your breath, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or what? Uh, hmm. It's like really natural kind of thing you're saying. Well, like yeah, like you're you're in the body. You feel me? Like the body, like the like the universe body, right? Or like mm-hmm. what say like or like. Or like the body of Christ, you know. That's that's another um, that's another uh, reference. Um, right. So it's like it's like it's like, or even better, like this is like um, how they how like every planet is an atom. You know, mm. like every planet's an atom. Like if you like zoom out from the galaxy, yeah. it's like, So like that, like you right. Know, it's like a body. So essentially you feeling that rumbling. If you zoom out, it's like, what if that's just like a galaxy exploding within your body? That would just be like an yeah. atom popping. Like that's just like a, a chemical reaction or something. Yeah. Um, but you know, so macrocosm, yeah. microcosm, and then that's your experience, right? Then you get like the actual audio visual experience of it. And that's, you know, the connection. Uh-huh. I get it. But, Right. That that was a great I like that. That was a really nice way of putting it. I like that. Thank I, you, bro. I mean guys, I'm you know me, I'm always pissing about buzz above and below. And I, I didn't really like look at it exactly like that. Like the the planets and like that that's a great way of putting it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so did you have like an experience kinda like that or like Um or something? As far different? as 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 with my meditations? Yeah, or? like the like did you have like a kundalini awakening, you know, or, I mean, if you're working with your chakras, I feel like that's already kind of it. You know what I mean? If you can feel it, like, I feel like that's already kind of it. Right. 
My fault. You can ask a question one more time. I was I was just saying like so did you did you have like a kundalini like awakening because like people will say all kinds of things like they got this like shooting light beam or something like that they see like a flash or like you know what I mean or yeah, I'll, I'll need to <laughs> <laughs> I'll need to like right okay <laughs> yeah got you yeah yo, so do, do you sun gaze do you do that too for your meditations. That's what I do love. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big yeah. sun gazer. Yep. You are? Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge. Love it. You do it sunrise and sunset, both? Nah, at this point, I only I only sun gaze when, like, it's, like, right with me. You feel me? Like, I used to be dang, like, the sun's right, right above, above us right there. Like, I used to be a little bit dangerous with it um, and look at it, like, past the hours you're supposed to. But, mm -hmm. like, well, when I first started, like, I was very, like, respectful of it. Mm -hmm. but um fast forward all that like at this point right now i'm like i just i just look at it whenever like i get the free time because really? it's always in flux yeah i used to, i used to like actually put out specific times to look at it so like mm -hmm. in the daytime and then you know the, um when the sun's going down right uh -huh. um sunset um but now i just do it whenever because um it's just what it is, man. Like time, <laughs> you know. It's so like, like during the day, valuable. You so what? Do you mean so like during the day you'll look at it for like a while or just a little I, bit? I'll probably never look at it more than like thirty minutes. Whoa, dude! Thirty. I feel like thirty minutes during the day. That's intense. Yeah, I mean, but hey, bro, like what you feel after it is worth it. <laughs> So, so, I mean, like, I guess I would be, I mean, I just really started getting into, like, I feel like I, I've looked for, like, a second during the daytime at the sun, and it hurts my eyes so bad. Like, I can't do that. Uh, what, like, what time, what time do you be doing it? Like, I, around this time, like, I, I tried, I looked at the sun the other day, because it was, like, through the trees, so I was trying to, like, you know, not, not try to damage my eyes too bad or something like that, but it was, like, too intense, even through the trees, like, around this you're, time you're supposed to do it like an hour right when the sun comes up and then an hour right before it's going down like right. those are the times like the rays won't hurt you like you'll be able to look at it like it's right in the sun yeah right but yeah. you said you do it during the day so when it's not sunset or sunrise right that's what i told you i got dangerous and i actually got to <laughs> walk. like you know i have a relationship with the sun like it doesn't hurt me wow but, yeah that's but i still you know you know because like like I can still feel when it's like, like it's like there's resist when, when there's resistance with my eyes. So like, mm -hmm. you know, but I ain't going blind off of it. I just, you know, I just I just feel. I know when to stop. You know, just respect. So like, if if you close your eyes, like, do you still see like that that light? You know what I mean? Do you still see that if if you do it in the daytime? Exactly. Exactly. You do? When I close my like like the ray will follow me. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How do you but, how do you usually like feel like after you do it for like so long? Um, it's almost like, well, it's I mean like it's a portal, right? Like, mm -hmm. I feel I feel refreshed. Um, one second. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to my house, but uh, okay. I feel refreshed. Like, can actually feel the energy of the sun. Right. And like, it's almost like it's almost like being a plant in a way. Like, you you kind of like build up, <laughs> and and then like your body will use it throughout the day, and like you probably go to bed with it. And um, I call it the zing off the zing and then you might you might it might like affect your dreams right like really um, yeah, yeah yeah like the yeah for sure like between a, a, a sun gaze day and a non-sun gaze day like i don't know it's just like having intentions mm. yeah That's what it's yeah I, I i heard uh because like i i first like I really started getting into like the sun gazing after I heard like this guy's spiritual so. Uh, do you know who that is, spiritual so? Yeah, yeah. Also, bro, I, I have four percent on my phone. I'm not the charger. Okay, but, yeah. Um, but we can all, like I can also like hit you up like what? 
like in 20 minutes, 30, we can continue or anyway. I'm, I'm going to go back to when we were talking about sun gazing because I still had some, I, I had some questions for you because I think you, did you mention it like affected your appetite or something like that? The sun gazing? Um, something like, you said something about like plants absorbing the sun like a plant. Oh no, I was saying like my body will like be like a plant. Um, and mm. <laughs> and how it like absorbs the sun and then I have it for like the day. You saw awesome like photosynthesis. Mm hmm I have the energy for the day. Yeah. Oh okay. So you got the energy for the day. So like what what is that like energy like? Like is it like energizing or is it just a different kind of like consciousness or something like Exactly. That? It's like it's like energizing. It's like if you were to play like, play a game of basketball. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Or any sport and just be like like feeling real energized after off of it, like pepped up mm. adrenaline. Yeah. Okay, so you you do feel like more energized then. Sure. Okay. So, yeah. So that, what I was trying to lead into is like the appetite thing, because like I mean, well, not not even to cut you off. It's just like getting life from the sun. You feel me? You, you get how you say like um sports is life. You like literally getting life from like other players. So I think it's just as simple as that. True that. Yeah. Okay. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. I like that. Um, cause like what really got me into sun gazing was spiritual. So, and then you see people like NLE, Chapa. Oh, man, NLE, Chasen. Yeah. yeah. You're doing good, man. Yeah. And like spiritual soul was saying like he eats like one time a day because he gets all his energy from the sun. So I was wondering if it was like that for you, basically, like where you have to eat less, like you're not as hungry. <laughs> Um, back in the day, um, shit, I mean, these days I'm kind of just doing whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've tried it. Like, I mean, I haven't done it enough. I feel like where it has affected my appetite, but like, I mean, I've been doing like a lot more, a lot more pineal gland, like exercises. And now like, I feel like when I sun gaze now, I can really feel like my pineal gland becoming activated, like when I sun gaze. Like, do do you feel anything like that either? Like it's activating your pineal gland. Yo, man, it's I, I truly feel like I have a fully um, functional pineal gland. Um, I feel like it like really got activated a long time ago. Mhm. Mm but to answer your question I'm, my relationship with it is not so strong that I can like really say yes or no bro mm. <laughs> but like I'm assuming yes so like do you feel like do you still feel like the pressure in between like your forehead like we go on about your normal oh, day hell yeah, or hell yeah. I mean, like, no no like my third eye my third eye piping bro like okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time, especially uh, recently sure. okay like, yeah, yeah like it yeah Oh no, you go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off or anything. Well, I uh, um like pretty much I was at a point in my life recently where like it 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 didn't shut off, but like the place I was in life, like it, it couldn't really function. Mm -hmm. Like it was so th it was so thick, like the density of the reality. Mm -hmm. Um but it just like I guess beamed through that recently. So like so like what I'm saying is that mm -hmm. it was working really nicely up to like maybe two years, three years ago. No, no, like two years ago. Mm. And now it's like working even stronger than it was before. So like, yeah, I went like super sane. I, I, yeah, <laughs> After I like similar. a dead point. Yeah. So like, is there something that you think like helped I, that, you know? <laughs> well, like I literally crashed. Like, I mean, my career crashed kind of like, like the energy in my career took a dip like two years ago. I don't mm. know if you if you um if you remember or even like noticed but um it was just like this is when i went to la right and um yeah and like pretty much just i don't know started tweaking you feel me but mm. not tweak like you know like and then like i disjointed lucas you feel me so like yeah. pretty much pretty much all that happened i would say I wasn't like I was I wasn't stable enough in myself, mm. and I went out to a place that is like chaotic with energy. Oh yeah, that, man. 
yeah, and I let it take me, you feel me? Because there's a lot of people, like, you know, normal people, like, you know, just a bunch of kids out there. And we all, you know, but, like, at the end of the day, like, it's real important to, like, know who you who you rocking with at all times. And so, long, yeah, so pretty much I took, like, a wrong... I sent my energy in the wrong direction. It mm. took everything that I built up at that point in the wrong direction because that's how strong energy is, bro. It takes, mm. like, one bad move to mess up 100 good ones. You mm. feel me? Like, one single bad move can, can mess up your whole kingdom. But um, it wasn't messed up. It was just stunted. You feel me? Mm. And and I, I had to go through, like, the lessons, really, yeah. for two years. You feel me? And it's not mm. even, like, less. You feel me? I'm blessed to be where I'm at. But, yeah. So... So, how long were you out there in LA? Um, at different periods and points, but um, the first time it was six months, then I came back to Boston, went back out, yeah, for like smaller durations of time, but mm -hmm. all over the span of two years. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, like, like, what made you like, you know, leave Boston and like want to go to LA? Like, is there something particular, or just like a lot of things going on? I mean, like, that's, it was, like, the creative hub. I mean, shit, it still is, but I guess, shit, like, creative, I mean, that's where all the celebrities is at, bro. That's, like, where the, the music industry is, but, um, mm. I guess, I guess back then, I knew where the energy was that would help me, and I went there, um, and it changed me. It changed, it changed me for the better, but not without, like, my hard work of actually getting that. Like, it's not, like, nothing nothing given easy in this world, you feel me? But especially not that. Um, and then from there, coming back to Boston and realizing that whole time, you, feel, you don't really got to go anywhere. You always, you always had what you needed, you know? Right. It's really just about, like, knowing yourself, like, mastering yourself mm. and putting out the best that you can from you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, everybody got it. But but it'd be you know like you only have what you have at the end of the day though you mm -hmm. feel me that's true yeah so like what they say knowledge is power like if you're born into if you're not born into it man like you gotta work to get it yeah you feel me and I, yeah. and like you know and that's kind of like all our stories unless you're like I don't facts know, like an industry plan <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, facts so so like i mean like this music game or just music whatever just like when you're really trying to build something like it's it's really just you're shooting darts at the wall and mm. making things you know that's 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 mm. life in general but especially True. that's what i'm doing so that's what i had to do and i was just you know anything for the growth but it's hard mm -hmm. yeah are the people like really different from like Boston to LA or they like, you know, their energy and stuff. The only difference is that, um, I'm not sure, you know, tell you the truth, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm still feeling into a lot, bro. I'm still feeling into a lot, but, um, LA at that time, um, was just, uh, and of course probably still is there. Yeah, LA still definitely like this. Um, it's just a vibe. You feel me? Like everybody's like on one. <laughs> they just they just chilling bro they just like wavy like everybody in LA is wavy um mm -hmm. and like when you come from outside of LA to LA like you get caught in that waviness so no matter where you from you're gonna like you kind of adapt to it like pretty quick too because like that the frequency is so high you know that's what I'm saying like celebrities live out there bro like you're in the you're in like the the ocean of that that celebrity that celebrity energy you know so like it's fast paced and especially when you're coming from like any 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 type town that doesn't move at that that same frequency you're going to meet a different type of reality and it's going to affect you <laughs> right you yeah because yeah. like oh no go ahead go ahead. um no you go Cause I watched this uh, recent video of Spiritual So, and he went out like to LA, and he he was like in his whole video, he was basically explaining like he he did not like the energy there whatsoever. He was saying everyone's see that's why I find this fascinating asking you as someone else who went to LA because I, I never been there, but he said like people are really low vibrational. He, he said almost, I mean this is probably a different time period maybe it could be honestly and but. 
he was saying like everyone that he's seen was depressed. Just about everyone he had seen was depressed. And he said he could feel everybody was ready to like smoke weed or something, like escape that reality. Like that's that's what he was kind of talking about. So Yeah, um I wouldn't say he wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. So yeah, that's that's interesting to hear the your take on that. Cause like for me, when I think of LA and like Hollywood, I think about all the honestly, I get I get a pretty grim picture, grim picture of like thinking about that. Cause like I feel like there's just so 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 much like behind the scenes. Like you you hear about Hollywood. You hear about how people are getting like abused to get roles all the time. You hear about all this like people selling their souls, and it's all mostly happening in LA. Like people feeding into all the dark energies. I hear like it's mostly happening in LA. Like all this darkness of what people get themselves into, especially when they're in these high roles. I mean it. I mean, there's people who are like speaking out about it, you know, like the the movie industry, uh, the movie industry, the film industry. That one guy, uh, I can't remember his name, but he he had he was giving the speech, and literally everyone. Yeah, there's, someone like, in, there's someone in the back with you, not to not to not to cut you off. Uh, in here in my room? No, my oh, dad wait. was just yelling in my little bubble. Oh, bet 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 bet. bet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I don't know, like, there was there was that one... Uh, I'm, I don't mean to press your area. <laughs> but for, but yeah. uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he was giving the speech, and he was, like, exposing all the darkness going on in the film industry. Even Brad Pitt was, like, talking about it. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know exactly what to believe. I guess I would have to go out there myself to know what it was really like out there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, from my experience, I know that, I mean, like, yeah, you can definitely feel it. That's no, yeah, you can definitely, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I mean, it feels like you're, you're coming back, though, with your music. Like, it's like, you got, you got your songs coming out. You, you just dropped Kingdom Hearts. That was a banger. Now, that and was then, a while back. Was well, it a lot? You. Was that six months ago? Eight. Eight months ago? Okay. Yeah. My most I, it recent. It feels so paradise. recent to me, though. It still feels so recent. <laughs> and then you dropped. Um, what's your most recent single? What's it called? Paradise. Paradise. I love that. So I mean, it feels like it feels like you're coming back. I mean, I'm looking at all the engagement, uh, and it seems like your fans are just so hungry for more. They're so hungry for more. I, I'm looking through all the comments. They want more, bro. <laughs> uh, man. So I, I fully believe in you to be able to, you know, reach way higher than what you think your highest point was. You know what I mean? I ain't even got it started, bro. I'm just happy to be here again. You feel me? Blessed to be here again, but I'm piped yeah. up. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, bro. Yeah, man. Like... Yeah, I used to, I used to love every day when you post those crazy Instagram <laughs> posts. <laughs> That's when I was in LA, bro. That was oh, that, that, that yeah. was in LA. <laughs> so as you can see, LA make you crazy. Yeah, he right? was showing yeah. everybody a wild side there. <laughs> that was awesome. I loved it, bro. Thank you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, oh yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about Kingdom Hearts. So, like, what what is that? I, it seems like it has a strong place, like big place in your heart. What's King, Kingdom Hearts all about? <laughs> I mean, like, it, it's it's the Kingdom of Heart, bro. You feel me? Put into a video game. If people can peep, I mean, like, mm. I don't know, man. Like, so I never Kingdom played Heart. it. I don't really know too much about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, the reason I want to make a song about it, first off, I mean, like, I didn't make it. You know. Like, like that's a game. So, like, the reason I wanted to make uh, Hearts Kingdom, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to switch it. I want. I got. I got like a sense to flip it. Like, something was telling mm -hmm. me flip it because you don't, you know, for for whatever like important reasons. But um, right. 
pretty much it's just the idea that the heart is you know the heart people usually say do they follow their heart or the do they follow their head right you know the heart will make the world a utopia facts but right now we're in a place where head mm. pretty much runs the show and then there's some people who are head and heart aligned right there's a good amount of the world who are just head right and don't really right have a function in heart obviously they're alive but don't have a good heart compass um then there's right. other people who just move by heart you know um i want to say like a lot of women might understand that that part you know like just like you know emotionally driven and just like in tune yeah. with what's you know empaths you feel me move mm -hmm. by heart less head like mm -hmm. they're not dumb they're intelligent but right like, it's just not you know mm -hmm. um but yeah um, yeah, I mean, the heart is uh, one of the most, like, energetic parts of your body. Like, that's literally where your electromagnetic field stems from. It stems from the heart. Exactly. And it's a big deal. So that's why I want to make, that's why, like, that's, that's how Kingdom Hearts has such an impact on me. Because it's like, you think about it. You think about it like a person made that game, right? But it's also their concept. That's like a person put their world in a video game. And mm -hmm. all I'm saying or not only me, but all the fans of Kingdom Hearts, is that whoever made that game, Square Enix, their heart reached ours. Like, their world mm -hmm. reached ours, like, in real like real life. You feel mm -hmm. me? So, like, so, like, it's, like, it's real Kingdom Hearts, bro. Like, like, I'm actually, I feel like I'm in Kingdom Hearts, bro. Like, I haven't really, you know, like, breaking it down with you right now is what I would say, because, like, that heart reached me. And, like, if you're mm -hmm. thinking about, like, the universe and reality being, like, much weirder than fiction um that like if you believe <laughs> in aliens yeah then then think of the idea that like what's even say that we're we're more evolved than like things than things that haven't even come into like fruition yet you know Facts. so like let's I let's know. say aliens are more evolved than us we're more evolved than like cartoons let's say cartoon realities is actually something that's really rocking off right now then mm -hmm. then it's to say that like we can't we can't it's like it's the dimension lower than us like we can't fathom what it is to like be an actual real living cartoon but that's I, and some people say life feels like a cartoon True. and like you know that's i feel like i live in a cartoon you feel me but yeah. obviously I, I don't live in a kingdom hearts game but i'm saying it, it connects to me in such a real way that like i you feel me i understand that concept i just explained to you right so it's almost like it's literally just as real as what we have here basically exactly but you know the difference like like i'm not yeah you know, like i you feel no, me I, yeah totally yeah yeah me? and and it makes sense i mean because like th when you think about it like this too like leonardo da vinci he got many of his ideas from dreams you know what i mean like a lot of and we got famous artists to get their ideas from dreams that's that's a realm completely separate from this physical realm so, and and that realm is even more real basically than what this realm is so like the third dimensional reality so that makes that makes a lot of sense to me it's like when we die where do we go i i truly believe you know we go to the astrals after after we pass away you know and that's basically i feel like we're going back to where we were and that's that whole astral realm that's the almost like the realm of the dreams it's similar to kingdom hearts you know what i mean it stemmed from an idea somewhere not in the third dimensional reality. Yeah, exactly like that, honestly. Like, yeah, definitely. Exactly. Sweet, bro. Um, so, do you, so you were playing a lot of, you were playing like a lot of video games. Do you still play any video games nowadays? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm also like grinding, you know, so it, yeah, it's, it's in pocket with my lifestyle. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's the balance. Mm hmm. What games do you play? Uh, Call of Duty is the only real other one. I'm I'm a Pokemon head, but um, I, I don't really play, <laughs> I don't play it much right now or haven't in a long time. But like I'm I'm still a Pokemon head. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always will be. Tell you the truth, it's another. It's Kingdom Hearts of Pokemon. Um, and then like when I'm really like engaging with other people, because you feel mm -hmm. me? Those are like those are like do it. Those are like personal relationship games. When I'm like actually engaging with other people it'd be like call of duty right um, yeah so you do you play pokemon on your game boy uh, game boy or on what what 
console. Um, I had it on Game Boy. That's why I say that. No, I'm hip, I'm hip. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to. I used to. Um, tell you the truth, I don't. Like I said, I haven't played it in a while. But like, okay. it like I don't know, bro. Po- Pokemon's deep for me, man. It like lives in me. Yeah, lives with me, bro. Yeah, bro. It's like I don't know. You made that video, um, more right. Pokemon on the rail, bro. Like I've been on that wave. I was, I was saying, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, like that's real life for me, man. Like, like me and Lil Uzi verse <laughs> on that wave, bro. You feel me? Like, yeah. If like, all right, so know. let's see. Uh, if you had to choose one of the starting Pokemon, would you choose Char- Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle? Which one would you choose? Um, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. Okay. Actually, ah, uh, nah, Charmander. <laughs> <laughs> Charmander. <laughs> yeah. Nah, okay. I like I like I like grass types, bro. I always go for grass types. The Charmander is lit. Like in real life, I know I'm having fun with a Charmander. What? That's true. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. Oh, he he learns how to fly too. I just realized that. Exactly. When he's a Charizard, I'm out of here. Okay. <laughs> Yo, <I'll>, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no Delta flights, bro. Just Charizards. Yeah. I was thinking Squirtle because he could get you to glide across the glide across the ocean with him, but like if you can fly, I feel like that's better. <laughs> I'll probably choose Charmander too, honestly. Or well, you wouldn't you wouldn't choose Squirtle? Squirtle? No, because he can glide across water. But if you got Charmander, you can glide across water and land. <laughs> so you can go to the mountains. He'll fly you Thanks. right up there. To the most beautiful places. Squirtle, he gonna walk. <laughs> uh, I mean, Minnesota's not even aiding us at all. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, oh, yeah, exactly. What's he gonna do? Maybe he'll grow some plants, though, honestly. Right? Sure. Can, can he do for the vegans? Like for, for the vegans, shouts to the vegans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all gotta learn how to grow our own food. If we got Venusaur growing our food, or what's that? Not Venusaur, right? Was it Venusaur? Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. Not Venusaur. That's his level up. But honestly, we all got to learn how to grow our food. I don't know. It's not, I don't know, man. Like, things can get crazy. You know what I mean? With food. I hear about food shortage, food shortages. I don't know if you heard Anna Lee talking about that. Yeah, I've seen him. And other, other people talking about that. Do you think there's gonna be a food shortage? I don't. Anything could happen. I haven't been. Yeah, anything could happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Make sure to get your canned beans and all that stuff. <laughs> get all your stuff. Get all your water. No matter. Just get prepared. But um, also, for because uh, I made that. I made that post about the Pokemon in like Lucid Dream saying that you could have any Pokemon you want in a Lucid Dream and you can do it. You can do that. You can do anything. Literally, I, I had I had a Lucid Dream once. I made these like I made this energetic ball like in, in uh, Dragon Ball Z and it was like shooting at this the evil thing. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had any Lucid Dreams or Astral Projection experiences? Um, Lucid Dream I do often. Um, Astral not too not too often not consciously mm-hmm. yeah. what's like does any experience stand out to you like have have you ever had like a crazy experience you know it's Lucid, like, nah i mean yeah yeah but i don't know like well okay one of like one of my favorite lucid dreams was when i was um younger and like it stands out because i think i feel like it's the future it's one of the like higher if not dopest realities that i can reach mm-hmm. um it's like it's like it's like it was like on some blues um blues cool stuff like when you jump into a TV, but except it was like like on like tab sheets um you know like LSD tabs mm-hmm. you know how you know how like it'd be on like a sheet right so pretty and like you know how they be having those colorful pictures those dope pictures on yeah on them? yeah so pretty much it was like every picture was like was like a blues clues TV you feel me not a TV but like the picture itself you could jump in it. But each picture was Whoa. like a different arcade world. You feel Whoa. me? So like, yeah, it's lit. That's why I can explain it just off top like this. Like it never left me. Um, uh, like one world would be like Tarzan. One world would be like Pokemon, <laughs> like we was talking. Uh, another world would be like what, like Aladdin's world. And as you can see, like this is like all cartoon esque. 
right, situation. Because yeah, yeah. because to me, bro, cartoons add so much beauty to the world, bro. Like they do. everyone's a cartoon head, bro. Even if people don't watch cartoons like that no more, everyone's a cartoon head. At some yeah. point, cartoons have infiltrated your life, and cartoons are one of the best things about planet Earth, bro. So like one of the higher realities for me, and like I guess like I was just in tune with that that timeline through dream. Um, and still am, but like definitely there. Like it was like I was I was there, and I just remember like the feeling was wild, and it was like it was just such a dope feeling. It's like literally being able to like, however the hell you doing it, jump into like the tab, take a trip. Instant, you feel me? Being a whole different world. Like one could be like Alice in the Wonderland. Yeah, and yeah, and like that's how like Kingdom Hearts connects too, because Kingdom Hearts is just like that. It's like a bunch of different worlds, but the mm -hmm. dream. The dream was just like that on tab sheets, which is ill in the Kingdom Hearts, because like you don't gotta you don't gotta fly no gummy ship or nothing. Yeah. You know I mean? so, <laughs> but yeah. Did you did you just do anything? Um, like, so you, you went to Aladdin and all that. So you like um, hop out then? Um Tarzan. Tarzan well, oh, we'll Tarzan. Up with rock. Well, yeah. <laughs> that sounds fun, dude. Swinging from some vines. Yeah, it's on some um <laughs> What's that Kevin Hart movie with uh, The Rock? It's kind of like that. Uh, Jumanji. Oh, Jumanji. yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, I never saw that one. I never saw the one, actually. I only saw the first one. But that that's pretty wild. Um, do you have a certain technique you usually do, or does it usually just happen naturally? It just happens on its own. It happens on its own. Mm -hmm. um, for me, like, I don't know about you, but I found, like, meditation helps so much with it. I don't know if you ever found that for yourself. Um, like, I used to do techniques, like all kinds of techniques to like do it. But then I found out like, as long as you meditate a lot, like lucid dreams are gonna be inevitable, basically. Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. So you never, you, you never did like the like technique where you do reality checks, right? They're just not like, they're just not, prominent enough for me like mm. they're not they're not intact enough for me like the dreams mm -hmm. where i even get to that point. i'm just like really aware when i'm in the dream but i'm not like mm. physic what is it what would you call like physically aware mm. like when you're when you're aware of your body right. in the dream like that doesn't happen for me too often but right. i'm always conscious mm -hmm. but you had a you said you had an astral projection as well um not too often the astral projections that I've had in my life have been off of like LSA and like maybe like two times being like in between dream dream and like um weight state you feel mm. me so like but I haven't had much probably like less than 10 in my life astrals mm. so you like you could you like when that happened like you you saw yourself there is that what it was like no, they were like, it was like ghost room. It wasn't even like flying and like, it was really like close to, close to like, um, it was like down to earth, like close to physical reality. Mm. Um, so like where people like, well, you, you probably know about this. Um, mm -hmm. It's like when people say like, they astral project, like, and I've had people tell me this, like they'll, they'll fly and whatnot. And it'll be mm. like, It'll be like, like the dement, like the feeling dimensionally is like removed from physicality, but like right. energetically, it's still like tied, right? You would say. Yeah, exactly. So, like for me, it, it was like it was more physical. It's like it was almost like having another superpower. It's like it was like moving through walls or something. But I, like it's mm -hmm. shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild, man. <laughs> yeah. These other realms. It's wild. What can happen? Yeah. Do you have any, like, I mean, I guess, like, goals or for your spirituality? Like, are you, like, you know, is there anything else that, like, new that you're doing with spirituality? Or is it, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, nah, man. Like, for me, for example, like, for me, my goal is just to, like, get more astral projections and like try to get more you know wisdom and knowledge through the astral realms and stuff like that like that's like that's for me um i 
I would say my level of spirituality, to tell you the truth, is a mixture of my imagination now, which which is wild. Um, mm -hmm. So as like the idea of manifestation, and since like I've like I've been I've been successful in in creating my entire career out of my imagination. Yeah. You know I mean? Like my spirituality mixed <laughs> with my imagination. You feel me? Like uh, yeah. imagination being like having that goal and desire and like every day yeah. in work to make it happen and now I have it. So like, yeah. Yeah. So that's why like a lot of stuff I explain, like they kind of like mix into real life and like fantastical you feel Absolutely. Like, imagination. Cause really like the world has the potential to get there. So I feel like I'm just tapped into the future while still living in the present matrix, I guess you could call it. You mean the potential to get into like, kind of like a 5d reality. Well, I definitely like, like I'm definitely, I'm five deep. I think seven to tell you the truth right now. Um, but I see, like the world has the thing is yeah for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like um, <laughs> pretty much, um, pretty much that's just me and whoever's here with me. You feel mm -hmm. me? But like the world in general is like still working as a collective to get to a place where we're pure to that degree to understand each other at that level with less um static in between us mm -hmm. um so essentially i'm saying that the world yes like when everybody's really tapped into their greatest potential as beings will mm -hmm. easily be able to level up the experience yeah. on earth like right now earth is not a bad place you feel me at least to me i see the you know I, we're going through shit. Don't get me wrong. I'm right, yeah, right. That. But like, Earth is not a bad place to what it has been, bro. We had fucking dinosaurs here, bro. We had like gladiators here. And <laughs> medieval times. Dinosaurs. <laughs> you feel me? Rest in peace. <laughs> you feel me? But yeah. like, like Earth, Earth was once a treacherous. Like we've been in worse conditions, but like right where we're at right now, we can get way better. And we could also, you know, like everybody to their own reality like i think that's what spiritual souls on right now like understanding like how we create our own um timelines but earth could regress for some people or like for the collective if not moved correctly but um yeah yeah i i'm in, i'm in a timeline where we're going up and i'm working to stay here you feel me and i'm working to um accelerate at my greatest so what's like so you you said space. like you said like 70 so is that, is that like I mean, I, I'm not too familiar with 70. Like, what's what's like kind of like the difference there? Like, is, so it could be beyond words, honestly. Like, that's okay. Well, I find that 5D has to do with the heart. So it's heart connection, being able to to connect like solely through empathy, and mm -hmm. like having that ha having that be a world of its own. Mm -hmm. Where I see 7D is kind of like what I'm talking about. Like, I'm really talking about a lot of like out there stuff, but I'm breaking it down to a level where you can understand it, even though like most people don't talk. Like, nobody talks about cartoons the way I just talked about them in a way <laughs> where it's like, you feel me? Like, you know, like I they used that. to make, I appreciate it, bro. Like, when I was younger, I used to say I, I believe in, um, well, I still do, but like I understand the, the difference between like dimensions and like where they exist. But when I was younger, I, I, I would tell my homies, like, I believe in Pokemon, bro. And I was always like a cool, you feel me? Yeah. But like, I, it was never, there was never out here, but but little old me, like I'm out, you know, I was, I was, I was doing dumb stuff. <laughs> like to me, it's, it's dumb only because like, um, because obviously it's not there, but like I had so much passion, self belief, ambition, and like imagine entombment with my imagination that like mm -hmm. I had people following me nonetheless, bro. Like I was believable because like, like that's how real I am. You feel me? Like, yeah there's different levels to being real, but like my imagination and my like purpose for being here was so real that I had other people following me looking for Pokemon that obviously weren't real, bro. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just your authentic self. You feel me? You feel me? Yeah. But like, but like, it's just like when it's just like before a person blows up or before like a celebrity tells the story of how they became a celebrity, it's like, no one's going to believe you. You feel me? But mm -hmm. if in 20 years, like a, a genetic scientist creates the first real life, like 
you know you know that's where like people that's where like there's bashes between like you know religion and the world and whatnot and i'm on i'm on neither side but i understand like the perspectives of, like people not wanting to tamper with like god's power to give life and whatnot but like mm-hmm. i just i i feel we're at a point in evolution and just you know like where we're working with god like what whatever happens mm-hmm. like bro like like i was talking to my peoples um about this recently it's like life's gonna hit you no matter what yeah and and people are gonna hit you no matter what people yeah, are are totally. are, are my, microcosm of life itself you feel me so like one way or another you're going to have to get with the drift of where things is going and right. like we're in we're in a rat race like I don't, i'm not gonna call it a rat race for the sake of like a a, a higher perspective of looking at things right but like some people view it as a rat race we grew up in a world where they call it a rat race right but i'll i'll say i'll say we we it is definitely like an arena out here and like some people some people have good relationships with the other players you feel me and i feel like that's how we're gonna see the most beautiful world that we can yeah. see but, but then there's the other side of the arena right where like people are still clashing and like For to real. me you're only gonna see the players who are not clashing if you're a player yourself that's not clashing because you have to stop from the madness and see the other people in the arena who are like yo what the hell is going on right now so you just maneuver through all the clashes and you like dab up the person who's not clashing yeah like, so like, I feel like that's the way we're we, living. Yeah, like, exactly. We dapping up right now. Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. That yeah, that's that's that whole yeah, ascending to five D reality. Just realizing that we we don't have to compete. There's no there's no like that's not a necessity. Like you said, it doesn't have to be a rat race. That's just a mental construct that we all came up with ourselves. And it's just I feel like it's it's a shame, you know, like. We could be using all of our resources simply, like feeding everyone. You know what I mean? Like giving everybody, everyone, what they need, so they don't have to worry. Like we have all the resources resources here on Earth. Like Mother Gaia has everything we need. It's really that obvious, <laughs> but it's a shame like that. that people don't see that. Like and like you said in the arena, dude. Like I made this one post. I'm dude. I'm trying to like you know me. Like I'm always trying to help expand people's like consciousness and like their awareness, open their minds. I post this video about like you know the shape of the Merkaba, right? The light body. You know about that. And like I was like saying, I was like pointing out how it's like all over the world. People are using this symbol, and like people are just getting into religion in the comments. Like, bro, that's not why I posted this. <laughs> not why I posted it. Like, can you, like, my, <laughs> like I posted this like for a, a spiritual aspect of thinking outside of religion, but people are so like, people are so into the religion that they can't even think outside of it. They're they're, they're all you know. Yeah, I hear it, man. Yeah, it's just I honestly. I mean, did you ever like have a like religious like upbringing or like? I was raised Christian. You were raised Christian. For sure. Shouts to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, and you, so you wouldn't call yourself that now, or you still would call yourself Christian? Um, I mean, ultimately, yes, I'm Christian because, like, yeah, like, I, yeah, I am for sure. Okay, so like, you you would say you still follow like, you know, the the Christianity, and it's kind of like, um. Just, just like the lessons and uh, the certain rituals, like going. Do you go to church? Like, is that something you do? Um, nah, not really like that anymore. But I, I grew up in it. I, I mm-hmm. went a lot, you know. And um, sometimes, sometimes you might catch me there, here, or there. Um, mm-hmm. but no, I got, I got a lot of love and respect for the church. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I like I have love and respect for all religions and everyone who who is practicing that. It's just it's just sad when it's like people have to have conflict over it. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I grew up Christian myself, too. But it's just like I kind of like I don't know. I just I don't like to follow any like I don't like to follow anything. So, yeah, I just don't like the label. I hear that, bro, completely. Yeah. 
So what, what else are you uh, working on now? What, what else you got planned for the future? Going hard, bro. Music everywhere. Bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good, re good releases. Um, good releases. Strategic and um, yeah, hard hits. So you're going for singles or any projects? Pro I, I have a project out next year. Next year? Yeah. Awesome. So, but this year you're just gonna. Uh, well, we we have well, we have we only have two months left, but some singles for the rest of the year, basically. Yeah, at least like one or two. At least one or two. Nice. That's awesome, bro. Looking I'm forward good. to it, man. Looking forward to it, bro. I love I love the messages that you put out so much, bro. There's not enough people doing what like the messages that you and me put out together, like. For sure. And I love I just I respect you so much for that, bro. I just want you to know that, man. You're doing an amazing thing for the world, bro. Sure, bro. Thank you. You as well, man. Thank you, brother. What's yeah. Up? All right. So you wanna you wanna let people know what they should check out then? Let the audience uh, know. Go watch Paradise. You feel me? Uh search me up, Kyle Bent. Uh yeah, go click that Paradise video. It's gonna be like the one of the first to pop up, run that up. Um, follow me on Instagram, um, loyal for bent with a four, and um, stay in tune. Website Kyle Bent Music, and thank you, Obvious, for having me, bro. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you for being on the Obvious Truth. Appreciate oh, you. Oh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. My, my fault, my fault. Tell your friends to bump me. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Tell your family. <laughs> uh, let's go up yeah for sure man all right thank you so much bro appreciate you it's been awesome talking with thank you, you bro. bro yeah it's been a dope combo yes brother all right man well you have a nice rest of your day and thank you so much bro you as well bro thank you brother peace oh please keep your mind at ease it's obvious <laughs>